This is the Atomstack X7 Pro. Let's talk about why this laser diode is cheaper than the competition, but it actually has more features and you have a laser with more power. I'm kind of putting this up against some of the other really popular machines that are in pretty much the same price category, specifically the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. And we'll also compare it to the X-Tool D1. Both of those have done full reviews on, and you guys can check that out. On the price side of things, this thing kind of fits right in the middle. Usually the Otour machine is around 500 bucks. This is coming in at 600, and the more expensive X-Tool comes in around 800. Now this prices probably will change, so make sure and check the links down below. But really we wanna see how this guy stacks up against the other ones. So right off the bat, it comes in a pretty standard box. The assembly doesn't take long at all. There's a little bit more to assemble with this than some of the other machines, but it still takes about 30 minutes. Uh, and really you're just kind of putting the frame together. You're adding in these legs and then you're attaching the laser module and then hooking up the wires. Now, if you want a machine where you basically have to do nothing to it, uh, check out the Otour Alfero, which is like a scaled down version of this guy uh, that is a good bit cheaper, but is also a lot less capable in terms of laser power as well as laser work area. And speaking of laser work area, this is a 410 by 400 millimeter frame. And Adam Stack actually advertises that you can extend this work area, especially in the Y direction. Add another one of these aluminum extrusions on the back side. So really you can get what, like 800 by 400, um, which is really, really big area. I mean, this already is a good size. And really for the projects that I do, I really don't get much bigger than like 12 by 12 inches. And actually this is a 12 by 12 sheet. So you can kind of see how that fits in. Now the frame's pretty nice. It's a uh, aluminum extrusion, which I think is pretty much the same thing that Otour provides, uh, but the front and the back rails feel a little thicker. And this actual mount for the laser head uh, is a little bit more robust. But in general with these machines, you're really not putting much load on it. So like the stability of the entire machine doesn't make a huge difference, but it definitely does help, especially when you're running this thing at higher speeds. And speaking of speeds, this thing has a max speed of 11,000 millimeters per second, which as of right now, I think is the fastest that I've seen on any diode machine. Normally they'll top out at 10,000. So I don't know if Adam Sack was just like, hey, we're gonna raise that up just a thousand just so we can say we're the fastest. Kind of like when they put like higher and higher antennas on buildings to get the world's tallest. But we'll get into it in a minute. On the practical side of things, you really won't run it that fast ever. And a few other things on the mechanics, this just runs off of stepper motors. In this case, there's just two. You have one right here, which is driving the Y axis. And then you have another one right here, which is driving it on the X axis. This rod right here basically just transfers that move all the way over so you don't get racking. Some other machines will actually give you two on the Y axis, which gives you a little bit more power, but this design seems to work pretty fine. This does not have an automatic Z axis, meaning there is nothing that actually moves this up and down um, other than manual. So there is this little knob on the front that you unscrew and you can raise and lower this guy, which really is pretty easy to make adjustments. Uh, but there are some machines that will actually have a sensor inside of the laser module that will basically be able to tell the distance it is above your material and then it will auto focus it from that. With this guy, it is all manual, but we'll get into why that isn't really a huge deal, especially with how they've designed their laser module. I really like their feet design. Um, these are just metal plates and you can actually get extenders as accessories to raise this up even higher. But what I've actually found is this machine actually has the most range in terms of the Z axis. So you have a good bit of range in terms of material thickness, but you could get those risers to raise the entire machine up as well, or you could just put it on a few pieces of wood that works too. So one feature that is pretty unique to this machine is they actually have this touch screen, which is magnetic. And it's just a simple touch screen. And what's nice about it is you can actually insert one of these micro USBs. You can actually export from software your actual file. You can insert it and then you can just run it directly from the machine, meaning you don't have to be connected to anything. Right now, this guy is connected by USB to my computer right over there. But if I had actually exported that code to that micro SD card, then I could just run it directly from there. But in addition to the USB and the micro SD connection, it actually has a Wi-Fi antenna built in. You can either connect to your computer over Wi-Fi, but they also advertise that you'll be able to control this through your phone over an app. Now they're saying that's not gonna be released until December of 2021. So I haven't had a chance to check that out. And in general, when you're looking at these style machines, I would always recommend just buying them based off of the features that currently exist. It's great that things might be coming, but you wanna buy it by what it could actually do right now. And right now, that app does not exist. 
And then on the connection side, you are gonna be connecting it to some type of software. So Atomstack doesn't come with their own software. They actually recommend that you can use a free piece of software like Laser or Gerbil, but I really like to use Lightburn, which works across a ton of different platforms. It is paid, uh, but it is also really powerful. Now, in addition to having magnets that this touchscreen attaches to, this control box also has your power, your USB, your micro SD connection, uh, in addition to an emergency stop, so if I just hit this right now, it would cut power to the entire machine. Now I'd actually have to twist that emergency stop to be able to reactivate and turn this thing back on. But it also has just a normal power button. It actually has another button, they're calling it a reset button, but you can use it with software to do things like repeating the same thing over and over again. You can just drop your new piece on there, hit the button, and it starts running again. On the safety side of things, other than the emergency stop, this also has a gyroscope that's built in that if you raise this above 20 degrees, it's going to kill the laser. So if you've seen my other review videos, especially when I'm running in a machine, you might've noticed I'm not wearing safety glasses. They don't actually include safety glasses, but that's actually because they have blocked nearly all of the UV light that is coming out of the machine if you're looking at it directly on. They have this panoramic filter piece of glass. So you can actually look at it and you're gonna see a mirror of what's underneath it. So that actually might look a little bit weird, but because the actual laser beam is so bright, um, you can see it through the glass. What's cool is you can actually watch it directly and you don't have to worry about your eyes getting messed up. And then also if you have it in space where there's people other than you, you don't have to worry about them as much wearing safety glasses. But as I'm actually sitting here and I'm looking at it from the side, you definitely can see some of that UV light bouncing. So really the best filtering only happens when you're looking at it directly on. So pretty much always I recommend using some type of safety glasses, regardless of the safety features that the machine might have. It's always good to be safe. Now, in terms of what this can engrave and cut, there's a full list on the website that you can see right there as well. Um, I did a larger engrave uh, just of a tiger. Kind of see how that one was working. Uh, and this one had just a little bit different settings I was also kind of moving it so it looks a little bit goofy, but you can see it did a pretty good job. So you can't do metal directly, like bare metal, uh, but you can do stainless. And so this is that same tiger, uh, but on stainless steel. So if your metal is coated, you'll be good to go and you'll be able to use this as well. Now I also tested out basswood. And so I actually ran this a few different times uh, because this kind of highlights a point that really is the main negative to this machine. And that is this right up here. You can see there's a good bit of charring. So if you're working with materials that are really flammable, which is most things that you'll be engraving, in the Otour machine, one of their nozzles actually has an air assist in it. And that is basically just a little tube with compressed air that is shooting right where the laser beam is going and it's putting out any flames that pop up. Not only does that give you increased safety, it also gives you a better end result, especially when you're using higher power and you're cutting. But currently not having the ability to easily add an air assist onto this um, would be the main drawback from this entire machine. And really, there's no way even to kind of get to where the nozzle is because you'd have to get through the assembly kind of in there. And with the way it's built right now, there's just not an easy way to do it. Okay, so now with the safety glasses on, let's actually talk about the laser. So this actually is the strongest laser module um, that you can get currently for a diode style machine, at least the one that kind of comes stock with the machine. This is actually 10 watts. That's compared to a five and a half watt on the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. And it's comparable to the same laser that is on the X-Tool D1, the 10 watt version, which is more expensive than just the five watt version. And so 10 watts is obviously a lot more powerful than five and a half watts and that's really going to give you two different benefits first is you're going to be able to cut more things and you're going to be able to go deeper and so we're going to do some cut tests here in a minute but it also means that you can run that laser faster so you really can get higher up in speed uh, or you can run it at the same speed but at a lower power so you actually save the overall life of the laser which is great as well now these 10 watt modules are pretty unique in that there's actually two five watt diode emitters inside of it and they get bounced around and reflected and get focused into a single dot. So it's almost like you're taking two of those five watt modules and just compressing them together. Another thing they advertise that I think is unique to just this machine, that it actually has a double compression spot, meaning that there's usually a lens that will focus the beam right at the end of all the bouncing around inside. But this one actually has two of those lenses, which gives you an even more focused beam. It's not that the laser spot is any smaller than the other ones that I've seen. It's 0 0.08 by 0.15 millimeters, but it has that thickness that actually goes longer in the beam path. And that's helpful because you're gonna have the best focus of the beam 
further through your material. So you're gonna have bigger margin of error in terms of focus when you're engraving. So this material is actually bowed up a little bit and it's gonna stay in focus pretty much the entire time. But where that really comes into play is when you are cutting. So you're gonna get a really focused beam throughout your material versus there being a focus at a single spot and then it gets less and less and less powerful. Now that laser dot is the same as the one that comes stock on the Otour machine. So that 0 0.08 by 0.15 millimeters. On the Xtool D1 is actually 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 as comparison. But those are all stats that the manufacturer actually gives you. And I finally decided after seeing some so many of these stats listed. Let's actually test it out and see what we're really getting. So I have this video microscope that lets me zoom in like 50X on an image and we're gonna run a test file and we're gonna actually see how wide that laser beam is. So there are a few different tests on here. This is the uh, raster engrave. And so you can see we have speed and then we have power across the top. And so this machine actually is pretty usable even at 9,000 millimeters per second, even starting up at what 40%. So you get a pretty good range. Then I will also do a cutting test, and there's actually a few different ones that I do, uh, but you guys can see this one, the, power, the speed range is from 100 to 400 millimeters per second, um, from 25 up to 100% power, and it's just one pass. Now, this is five millimeter birch plywood, or like a quarter of an inch, so let me get a good idea of the type of stuff that it will be able to cut out, especially when you're running it slower at higher power. But to actually talk about the width of the laser beam, I run this line interval test. So first off, this gives you a good idea um, if you change your line interval, what it visually is gonna look like. So maybe you wanna go with something like this or something like this, depending on the effect that you're looking for. But you can see here at the bottom, I have the line interval set to 0.5 millimeters. We run it both horizontal as well as vertical. So if I actually put these underneath the microscope, I'm actually seeing the width of the laser beam. So if I measure the width of that line, both in the horizontal and the vertical, I'll get a good idea of the actual laser spot. And again, we run it in the vertical and the horizontal because a lot of times you don't just have a square beam, you actually have a rectangle. It's actually thicker in the vertical than the horizontal. All right, so we're gonna measure these real quick. I have the horizontal as well as the vertical in here. And I basically have a little ruler um, where each tick mark is 0.01 millimeter. So from right here to right here, that is 0.1 millimeters, which is really small. So Adam Stack is saying in the horizontal, you're gonna have 0 0.08, uh, which for the most part, I think you can get to. So when this line gets a little bit thinner, you can see we're kind of getting right at uh, 0.08 or somewhere in there. But I think this also shows you how much the material actually plays a part. So you can see um, even just the thickness of the line is changing a good bit just because the material consistency is changing. Uh, this is in the horizontal. And then if we check it in the vertical, this one they are claiming 0.15, uh, which seems to be about right if you kind of averaged it out. Uh, so from here to right there, about 0.15. Now these test files are something I'm starting to run in pretty much any machine that I use. Now there's a link down below if you want to download these test files and bring them into Lightburn yourself. And then you can run them on your machine and you can kind of see what the best settings are. Because that's always my recommendation when people ask what type of power and speed I'm using, it always depends. So run a bunch of different tests, which these pretty much let you do in one go. And then you're able to test it out and figure out what works best for you. Now, another test that I'll run was basically like an expansion on this one. I do the same speed and power settings, but this time I change the number of passes. So you can see uh, for three passes, um, we're cutting out a good bit, ranging all the way up to 400 millimeters per second and a good range of power. But really you can use those cut tests to see which one is gonna work the best for you and you're gonna get the less charring around the actual material. And then one other one I do is here at the top and it actually looks kind of crazy. Um, this is actually for engraving. So this guy is the same as that square test that we did below, but I actually like to use a picture. So in this case, this is just the Mandalorian helmet to give me an idea of kind of the range of black and gray values that I can get. Because sometimes I find that these settings are gonna look a little bit different when you're doing an actual picture versus just kind of like a solid square like we did before. So kind of going along this direction of the grid, will probably give us pretty good settings. Now that is actually a 0.1 in terms of the line interval. And so you can see I did pretty much the same thing, but I increased the line interval, um, which is kind of like the DPI. And so we've got, let's see, 250, 500, and then I didn't even run it at 1,000 because I was getting a ton of charring and actually it was cutting all the way through. So I didn't want to get a lot of smoke and soot 
in the actual laser beam. I would actually need to run it a good bit faster if I didn't want to do something at that high of DPI. But I find that 500 maybe at 50, uh, 3000 or at 25% at 2000 gives me a pretty good range. Now this is compared to Otour. So you can see you got Adam Stack on the left, and you've got Otour on the right. So you can definitely tell right off the bat that you're getting a lot more power um, with the Atom Stack. I mean, I've got usable values in the 9,000 millimeters per second, um, even up to like maybe 70% versus the O Tour. Uh, you really don't get anything that dark until you get way, way, way down um, to 3,000 or 2,000 millimeters per second. So you can tell the power in that laser module is definitely delivering. And the most obvious of that is when you jump over to the cut test. So just looking at one pass, I was able to cut out at 2,000 millimeters per second and 100% power. But on the O Tour, I could only cut something out at 100% power at 100 millimeters per second. And actually on the Atom stack, I could drop that all the way down to 50% power and cut something out. So really that pretty much is the difference right there, that you can cut something out at half the power that you would have to on a five and a half watt laser, that in this case is on the O2 machine. Now you might be like, yeah, duh, Brandon, it's 10 watts versus five and a half watts, um, which that is the big difference. But what I think is unique about this is at the time of this recording, this is $100 cheaper than the 5.5 watt machine from O2. So really, if I had to pick between the two, the fact that you can use this with the exact same software, so everything else staying the same, but you pretty much get a laser module, which is twice as powerful, I would more than likely go with this guy. Now that does come with the caveat because Otour has been putting out a lot of laser modules here recently. Actually on their smaller Alfero machine, you can get a short focus and a long focus. Okay, that finished. So I definitely could see them coming out with a 10 watt laser module, but more than likely with how it's priced right now, it might be more expensive than this one. This is basically the cheapest that you can get a 10 watt laser module on a diode machine. And then when you compare this with the X-Tool D1, the five watt version of that machine is gonna run you about 600, and the 10 watt version is gonna be at least $150 more than that. Now on the pro side for the X-Tool, the overall build is really, really, really nice. It's probably the nicest diode machine I've ever tested. Uh, but the big caveat with that one is as of right now, you can only use it with their software. So what's my recommendation? If you're wanting a machine that's got a good bit of power, meaning that you're gonna be doing a good bit of cutting, or you're gonna want to engrave stuff fast, this is a great machine. I would pick this one up over the O Tour, especially because it's cheaper currently. Now, if you don't need to cut stuff and you don't need something this big, then this might actually be overkill for you. You can definitely pick up machines that are smaller, but also a good bit cheaper, around a couple hundred bucks as well. Now we've been talking about the O Tour Laser Master, the X Tool D1, as well as the O Tour Alfero. I put together a full playlist of all those reviews right there, and we're gonna jump into it right now. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Thank <laughs> you.